Hey, what's going on, everybody? Michael with The Real 1% back at you guys today. Thanks for joining me today. Got a special guest all the way from L.A. via meeting in Germany. What up, Jose? How you living today, bro? How's it going? Actually, Sacramento. Sacramento. Oh, my bad. LA's a little far. I meant to say, I meant my, my bad. I meant to say Cali, it's man. Good, my bad. Good. My bad. I, all right. You know, they rep hard out there. In the, in the, yeah, in the yeah, fed, yeah. Man. It's a whole different area of California over there. Yes, yeah, sir. So we got another episode of Military to Civilian, the uh, game plan to ultimate success. You know, it really what I've been thinking of calling it like the last assault, the last mission. Like we always plan for these missions when we're in the military and we do all these trainings and all these rock drills and stuff like that. But like we're not really doing that when we get out the military. So hopefully that's what we're trying to do here is sort of plan with everyone that comes on that way. The people that are still in serving and the people that are out struggling, we can get over this, these humps together. So. Appreciate you being here today, man. 100%. No problem. No problem, man. I'm glad to be here. Hey, so we'll just jump right into it and uh, get busy. And if you don't mind for the listeners, like, go ahead and let everybody know what made you join the military. Obviously, we know where you're from now, uh, maybe. And then just give us some stuff that you did in the military if you want to touch on any of that and lead us up to the point where you start thinking about getting out of the service and what that looked like. Sounds good. Sounds good. So I joined the military back in 2012. It was kind of like, one of those, I'm not doing anything, I want to do something. So I ended up, I was going to school, I was going to community college, and I'm like, you know what, I don't really want to do this. So I just flat out dropped out and just joined the military, went to the recruiting station. I was like, hey, I want to be infantry. I was like 21 years old. I ended up joining. And then I left. I ended up going to Germany as my first duty station, deployed to Afghanistan, eight months in. It's a brand new private. Then came back and then went to Fort Hood, deployed right away. So maybe like two deployments in like three and a half years. And then after that, it was kind of steady. So I think I never really thought about getting out. So I didn't really want to get out. I was like, well, I'm going to do. And then I ended up getting injured. So after my injury, that's when my mindset had to switch all of a sudden because I knew it was a, it was a, my torn rotator cuff. And I was like, I can't be doing this infantry stuff no more. And then I ended up getting the, the opportunity to med board. So that's kind of what when I started switching my mentality. And that's kind of what led me into thinking about getting out and stuff. And that was about 10 years in. So I thought I was going to do all 20. But there was another plan for me, I guess. So, hey, so the one thing that we've been like talking about recently on here is like having a plan before you go all the way in. So like, like for me, when I joined the military, I thought I was going to just get out and get, you know, go do four years, get my GI Bill. So I sort of had like a little bit of a plan, but I ended up doing more time, blah, blah, blah. But in your, in your time, did uh, what did you want to do when you retired? Did you just want to? Did you say I'm gonna do 20 years and pretty much get my retirement and just chill out for a minute, or did you have something else planned at the end of the road? So I kind of just took it like enlistment at a time. So I signed up. I I never reenlisted for more than three years at a time. So and that and I had my wife, my wife Nina. So I had her with me. So it's kind of more of a decision. Like we looked at it the last year. Like where are we at now? What do we want to do? Like I hadn't done any college. I hadn't done any of that so i'm just like you know what like i'm just gonna stay in it was it was it was being great for me the army was great for me and my family we it showed me so many opportunities sent me to so many different places to travel and all this stuff that i would never think of even going so i kind of was looking at it you know in the long run like as much as would like to mess around with everybody there like oh no i don't want to be in 20 years i in my head i wanted to be and i wanted to kind of just see where i was going from there so it was kind of like i kind of went in just plan a i didn't have a plan b to be honest with you no, no problem. That's cool. I mean, that's cool to even say that because I'm sure plenty of other people do the same thing, man. Think they're going to just get in and do it. You never know what's going to happen and, and exactly. injuries happen. And like, you know, it doesn't have to be a battle. But I mean, you like you said, you're going pretty much like I was. Go come back a year, go again. So like you're over there nonstop, man. I'm just, you know, glad you're good and glad you're OK. How did that how did what happened when that med board hit? Like when you started going through that process, were you like, did you start preparing to get out? How long How long was it from start to finish pretty much be before you saw the last of the Army? So, of course, when something like that happens, you're never ready for it. Like, of course, it's it's cliche. I was, like, probably at the best point in my career. I had all these additional duties. I was an equal opportunity master resiliency trainer. Like, I was ready to go. I'm like, okay, I'm going the right way. And all of a sudden, I, I hurt my shoulder. And I'm just like, wait, this is weird. Like, I've never really felt like this. So. The whole process probably happened to me when I was in Germany. So it was like in 2019 when it started, then COVID hit. So COVID really affected a lot of the surgeries. They wouldn't do surgeries if they weren't like life threatening. So of course I had to wait to get my surgery done. And then I ended up, I ended up actually being able to like come back to uh, America. So I ended up coming back to Fort Lewis when I was over there. So the whole process, it was from 2019. So finally February of 2022, I ended up getting out. So it was, 
it's a little bit is a, is a little bit lengthy process but the med board process itself it probably took about nine months itself once they told me like okay you're enrolled for the med board there's nothing else we can do so now we're going to start doing everything we need to do to get you straight and, and get you out so did that did you start what did you do because you obviously you're an nco did were you left on your own did you have good mentorship and your side that was going to take that took you under their wing and started like saying hey did you get your claim in? You gonna get your VA claim in? Hey, what you gonna do when you get out? Just anyone in your corner at that point? Yeah. So honestly, when when I got to uh, when I got the 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 thing you could do the most is just be honest because I didn't I didn't have the full on that I was getting med board yet when I got to Fort Lewis, but I went straight to the first sergeant. I said, hey, like I know what's going on. There's probably a ninety nine percent chance that I'm getting med boarded. I don't want to just take up a spot. He ended up saying that he was going to send me to uh, S3 because he said, yeah, we don't need you here in a line unit. If you're going to be, thank you for being honest. And then I ended up working with him a little bit. He actually really liked me. And then I liked him. So shout out to First Sergeant Hall. He actually, he liked me. He put me as a platoon sergeant for headquarters. So okay. I ended up being platoon sergeant for headquarters. And he told me, you know, you give me whatever you can while you can. And as soon as your med board process starts, then I'll, I'll hook you up. And he was true to his word. He I, I helped them out with whatever I could when I was there. Of course, I had permanent profiles, so I couldn't do much, just any admin stuff, just any anything that we needed to do that was out of my realm. But I, I learned quick on the spot, you know, trying to help them out. And then after that, as soon as the the, the paperwork got in, that I was going to go through the, through the med board process, through the IDES process, he was like, okay, I, I got you. And then he ended up letting me do whatever I needed to do to get out. So I was really thankful for that. Not bad then. Yeah, that's cool, man. I got drugged to the field during my uh... – my outing but that's I good. hear that a lot I hear dude that seriously lot. they don't care some people like so that's good that you had good leadership and that you actually got taken care of because that's what it should be about man like you gave the military all that time you should be able to have yourself you should have some time to get yourself straight and your family straight for you to succeed um once you make it to the you know the civilian side of the the game so did you start getting your VA claims and stuff like that in? Did you get? Yeah, you so have- that's 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 a good thing about. It. I don't know if they did it before because I was actually just talking to VSO yesterday because I was getting my uh, license plates and all that. And he yeah. told me when he got out, they just said, "All right, bye." But when before when I was in the process, they didn't let you get out until everything was done. So they did the claim, they did all the ex- all the ex- exams and everything. I, like all that was done while I was still in, so I was still doing that out as I was in. And by when I got out, like that next month, like after my leave was done, that next month my VA started started going and it started hitting. So I was like, okay, this is pretty this is pretty smooth. So I think I got lucky in that in that in that uh, aspect. But a lot of people don't really get that lucky. So I don't know if that's how they do it now or what. Well, yeah, I think like from what I've been hearing recently, it seems like you can start like your claim like a year out. I don't know if that's for retirement or as as far as retirement and ETS, but. That's definitely something I'm going to have to look into that way. I don't misspeak on anything like that, but I know that you can do it before you. I mean, even when I got out in 2015, I know that I could I could have went to the VA. It was like within the last like two weeks or 30 days when I, I didn't really have a, like a year out like we we're talking about now. But I still didn't even know what that was and I didn't go. So I got out with zero percent. So I'm glad that you didn't yeah. do like me and have nothing, dude, because – I have, a, I have a lot of friends that actually got out like that. Like I have a friend right now that's in the Marines that I'm helping him out do his claim because he never even thought about doing the claim. And I'm never. Like, well, I'm like, like you've been out for at least what seven years. You need to figure. You need to like at least put a claim and figure out what's going on. The worst they're gonna tell you is that it's not service connected. You know. That's it, dude. That's it. And it, 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 you can always go back again, but it's like going. Let's rewind it real quick because like. Dude, I did the math, man. Like, I got it took me five years to get to 100% permanent total, right? I had all the stuff in my records, dude, you know, or as time progressed, it's like the stuff was there, but I didn't have the wherewithal to put it all together and, and go after what's mine. And then a lot of people start feeling this guilt trip or this pride or this, like, oh, no, nah, I'm good or all this stuff, man. But it's like, you know, go get what's due to you. It's not like you're saying to go lie or do nothing like that. But if you have the stuff in your medical records, like, you should have that service connected and, and get it taken care of because it, it, it could be life changing for you and your family. Exactly. Exactly. And it's not even about it's just switching your mentality up just because it doesn't mean, look, I'm getting 100 percent doesn't mean I'm going to take 10 percent away from another veteran. Like, that's not how it is. Nah, dude, we're like, not. We're not leaving. We're not taking anyone's money. Dude. If anything, we're not getting enough money because no one's going to get what's truly is there. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. Like, no. one. Yeah. Like, like you said, no one's asking you to lie or embellish about anything. They're just. If it's on your records and it's something that that happened to you, you should put it down because, like, like we said, the worst you're going to say is it's not service connected. So, did you have a lot of stuff in your medical record before you like hurt your shoulder that you actually got to, like from your deployments and stuff like so, that? Where you- 
So I really didn't have that much on my medical record. I had a couple of times I had been a sick call because you know how it was back in the day. Oh, oh yeah. Who are who? Uh, you can't go to you can't go to sick call. So I had a couple of stuff and I had a couple of surgeries that were minor. But I think uh, what what really helped me what really didn't help me. I guess you blessing and the curse is that I have sleep apnea. So that was one of the big things that ended up getting me that one hundred percent and just all the other little little stuff that they check while I was doing the, the examinations, like the stuff that I put on there and they did x-rays, they did all that stuff, like, because I didn't have record on it, but they did check me. So it was just, it just stuff that I was, I wasn't afraid to say, Hey, like I'm hurt. This is, this is something that's wrong with me because it was really wrong with me. And then that's something that ended up, that ended up helping me out in the long run. Did you get a, uh... Did you get a sleep study then in the military? Yeah, so I got a sleep study in, in Germany. So I ended up getting okay. a sleep study because I, I always knew I had sleep apnea. I'm, I'm a big snorer. I mean, my wife can tell everybody that, that I'm a big snorer. So she was like, okay, you need to get checked. So I ended up getting checked. And they're like, yeah, you, you got it. Like, I was kind of like in the in the borderline where they're like, yeah, you, you need a machine. So then I was like, all right, well, if it helps me sleep at night, it makes me feel better. And it does if you use it. It's kind of weird, but you can also get like the other piece for your nose instead of your mouth. That that's yeah. you know they got two different things. But the crazy thing with the sleep apnea, man. While we're on this topic, is they're trying to the VA is trying to change something. So that's how you know. Like I don't know, man. You know what I mean? Like I don't know what it is. They're trying to. I know people that already have sleep apnea, like grandfathered in and stuff like that per se. But in regards, the I know they're trying to make changes to the sleep apnea, man, because that's fifty percent if you have the. If you have a CPAP machine that's fifty percent, everyone's always like, "Go for tinnitus, go for this, go." Like those are those are ten percent claims. Like mental health, you can get you can get one claim for your mental health. It could be PTSD, it could be anxiety. It's going to be diagnosed as one thing, but it's an umbrella thing. So all that's under one, but you can get all the way up to hundred percent for that. You know? Yeah. Excuse me. And same thing with like sleep apnea. If you have that, if you have the machine, that's fifty percent. So those are huge claims to like think about and put in. I never even knew what a sleep study was, but um, I got a sleep study done when I was at the military in the, at the VA clinic in St. Pete. And I ha I work with other people and I got Nexus letters and stuff like that. And you can get that tied into yeah. secondary. So it's like, don't give up guys. If, if you have sleep apnea, go get a sleep study done. I think they even send it to your house. Now you could do it from home possibly I've heard, but like that can still get service connected. Some people think it really can't. And that makes them stop going after it. And even someone I knew that was a VSO said that's no, that's not going to happen. And it happened. He's like, well, how'd you do that? So like, don't don't fool yourself because it can still be done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, every, don't give up. Every case is different. That's what I'm saying. Like, don't look at it the way I see. It, don't look at it like, oh, am I going to get 100 percent? Because am I not going to get 100? Look at it like I have an illness. This is right. something that's wrong with me. And let, let me let me check it out because you know whether they tell you even if they put zero percent, it could still be zero connect zero percent connected. And here in California, even if you have a zero percent service connected, your kids could go to school uh, for free in a Cal State, uh, a Cal State or UC. I just found that out yesterday. So it's like, okay. like you just have to be service connected, and they they could end up going to your spouse and your kids could go to school for free in a Cal State or UC out here in California, which is something that I didn't know until yesterday. So it's just crazy. <laughs> That's wild, dude. Yeah, I, I, they got something called the Hazelwood Act, and they have like another chapter of the the GI Bill or Chapter yeah. Thirty Five. But dude. Yeah, man, on, on endless benefits and just like don't give up on yourself on this on the uh, disability stuff. What uh, like, let's go back a little bit towards your plan. Essentially, like, what you start thinking about doing when you were platoon start? Did you start looking for jobs? Did you start? You know, what you what that look like? So I was, I mean, I was lucky enough to where uh, I kind of was gonna stay in Washington. My wife had a, a pretty good job in Washington, so even when I got out, I was gonna stay there for a couple months, and I was doing school. So I was, I, my goal was to finish my undergrad before I got out. That way I could use my GI Bill and then uh, or whatever I needed to use for my master's. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get my undergrad here. And then once I go back to California, I'm going to go to school in San Francisco and just get the highest BH I can get while I'm going to school there. So that was that was always my plan. And it ended up working because I ended up getting my undergrad and like probably like two months after I ended up getting out of the military. So I ended up getting my undergrad and then uh, I ended up applying to a uh, grad school in San Francisco and getting accepted. So I'm going to start this nice. fall with that. And then the kind of like the, the the blessing of that was that I was able to use Volk Rehab for school. So I'm not even using my GI Bill yet. So I'm able to use the Volk Rehab and they're paying for me to go to school and they're matching the rate because I haven't used my GI Bill of what the BH would be for the GI Bill. Hey, good for you, man. How'd you, how did you hear that? How did you hear about that? Because I did the same thing. 
So I, I did it accidentally because when I got out of course and then I moved back to California, I was, six months later, I was like, all right, California's a little expensive. I need a job. So I ended up working as a solar technician with my with my buddy. The one I was talking about earlier that got out of the military, he ended up, he ended up, uh, he was a manager. He ended up getting me a job as a solar technician without knowing anything about solar. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I ended up doing that for a couple months. And then I, I was just online. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to apply for this Volk Rehab. And then they ended up calling me and asking me a bunch of questions and doing an interview. And I kind of like didn't want to do the process. I'm like, wait, this, this is kind of long. Like, what is this for? And the lady was like, no, like, these are just questions that I'm going to ask you about your job, if it affects your disabilities. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, I, I really didn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden, I ended up getting approved and she ended up explaining everything to me. And I'm like, whoa, I can't believe I didn't know anything about this. And and just researching on VA, VA uh, gov, kind of like just looking at stuff and reading reading what what was out there. Cause I never really went to a VSO. I never really did any of that. Like when I went to the VSO the other day for my license plate, I, he's kind of was like, you were doing all this on your own. I'm like, yeah, I was just looking at stuff and seeing what was available for, for veterans. And kind of, that's kind of what we have to be is proactive. Like, like when you're in the military, you, you do everything you can to learn your job. So why not when you're out, just read what's out there for veterans. Every state has different, uh, different stuff that you can get. It, it all varies in where you're at. I mean, California has a bunch of stuff. If California has a lot of stuff, then I know all these other states have a lot of stuff as well. Nah, dude, good for you for doing that, man, because like, like no one's coming to save you. No one's going to come like deliver the voc rehab uh, packet on your, on your doorstep with the paper and say, here you go, bro. Sign up when you're ready. Call me, you know, we'll be ready for you. But dude, Voc Rehab is awesome, man, because I got out. I, I was working dead end jobs pretty much, you know, getting paid like trash. Like we all probably experienced at one point or another when we got out, if we didn't really have our stuff together. And then uh, going to school, I was like, yo, I'm, I'm done. I can go to school and get $2,200 a month BAH. Why am I working for $13 an hour, mm -hmm. dude? You know, and I, I can learn something and get a better skill set or whatever, mm -hmm. network. So then I started talking to, they had a lot of veterans there. Then they're like, you know about Voc Rehab. So then I'm like, nah, what's that? So then I apply, I got approved or whatever. And sometimes you can have a stickler or a counselor that you might not know, like they might not be all open book to you, but it's our job to know what we're getting into. Yeah. So it's like when you when you guys do apply for Vogue Rehab or Veterans Readiness and Employment, what they call it now, because they change the name. So we're not, we're talking about the same thing here. Like Jose said, you can go on va.gov and apply for it real quick. It takes like 30 seconds probably. 30 You're, seconds, yeah, it's like yeah, literally yeah, 30 I'm seconds, like, dude. It takes like yeah. two clicks, dude. You're like done. Then they send the stuff in the mail and you got to do a little bit of legwork. You got to do the go to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and like look for the job market. You got to do market research on the job you're going to go into and then say why that would be a good job for you because of the service connected disabilities. Folk rehab is pretty much uh, an employment uh, they want to get you employment, uh, a job rehab program, right? They want to get you back in the workforce. It's not yeah. about, but then you can get it. You know, you can get a, uh, a laptop, you can get a printer if you don't have it and you can get other um, stuff like maybe a standing desk or stuff like that if you have disabilities. But sometimes these counselors aren't going to talk about that in the open. Sometimes they will, but now, nah, man, good for you that you found that because I just passed a law a couple years ago too, that if you use voc rehab first, you can use your GI Bill after. It used to be if you use your GI Bill, it's taken away from Voc Rehab. You can yeah. only get 40. No, now you can go to school pretty much for like seven years. You can use your GI Bill. You use Voc Rehab. Just say you're going to go for a master's degree. What's that, like maybe two more years or something like that? Yeah. But people are getting doctorate's degrees. People are getting becoming judges, lawyers. So, like, it's crazy, man. I'm glad for you that you got on that, dude. That's awesome, man, because I'm yeah. using my GI Bill now, and I'm going for my master's, so I sort of did I didn't have no school when I was in, barely any class done. But, you know, if you set yourself up for success and use that TA every year and just get out with a bachelor's degree, you know what I'm saying? You could get doctor's degree paid for free. For sure. Get, for get sure. paid. So. And, and and it's possible. Trust me. I was I was being squad leader, platoon sergeant, and going to at least two classes, just doing yeah. two classes, doing just, just slowly. And then what, another thing, when COVID hit, everything was so slow, and that's when when my wife was like, you know what, you should do school. And I'm like, you know what, you're right. Let me let me, let me try to get my undergrad. So that, that's kind of what pushed me into it. That's not bad then at all. What, um, what would you, looking back on it now, what do you think you wish you would have done better when you when you first got out? Like, was there anything that you struggled with when you uh, when you first separated? Yeah, I think I think like doing stuff like this, like joining joining like a veteran group, maybe, maybe a veteran for a uh, foreign wars, VFW, maybe something, because I got out and I just kind of like just separated myself and kind of just didn't like reach out to them. Like, of course, like, like I told you earlier offline, like I still talk to my vet friends that are all out and stuff, 
but we don't really talk about like what our transition, like what are we doing? We just talk about just regular sports and stuff like that. So yeah. I think maybe finding finding stuff where where they could have told me stuff about like vote rehab, or, like looking at stuff like this, like a podcast or maybe like this or something, just something that could have helped me know what I was going into because like I was 10 years of nothing but the military. Now it was time to get out of the military and kind of like find your identity is kind of what I was looking at. Kind of getting that mentality, like don't base what other people are doing based on what you're doing. Like they had a 10 year head start. Like, yeah, they're already in great jobs, already great careers, but just kind of like something like that, where I had somebody kind of slow me down and tell me, all right, you've been going at a hundred percent for your, for 10 years time to slow down a little bit and figure out what you want to do so i kind of think that that that, that would have helped me out a lot more going on that's a good one dude going 100 percent for 10 years time to 10, slow down it, years bro slow it is down. some people go 100 percent for 33 years a star yeah. major or, or a colonel or whatever general man like what did you have a hard time turning it off when you got out the military because some people are like okay two-part question did you have a hard time turning it off when you got the military and part two what did you use to decompress that worked for you? So I think as far as uh, turning it off, not really, because I don't think I don't think I had a situation where I had to really turn it turn it on or off. Because like I said, I just got out and I just did school for those six months and just focus on the books. I mean, I was lucky enough to be financially OK, financially ready and to be able to do that. So that's something that you need to set up. Like as soon as you know you're getting out, if you know in advance like I did, Try to set up your finances as hard as you can. Think about think about that door to ash order. Like, oh, maybe I should go pick it up, save a little bit of money or something like that. It's just you have to you have yeah. to like fend for yourself. You don't have that BA, you don't have that, you don't have that stuff. Now you're like, okay, it's time to be a uh, it's time to be a, an adult and figure out what I'm doing. So that's something that I that I had to do. And I was lucky enough to just do school while I was doing that. And my wife was working, so she was able to help out. So I think that was easy. And then as far as the decompressing, honestly, it was just getting back in shape because I was, when I hurt my shoulder, I stopped working out. So just going to the gym and just feeling like I was, I was getting physically fit again, feeling like I was back in there. That really helped me out and kind of got those endorphins going and made me feel like, okay, okay, you're, you're, you're getting better. Your shoulder's getting better. Cause it's just an ongoing thing that I had to do. So you're saying that we can't order black and white and Vilsec every night <laughs> before you, if you're going to get out of the military, you got to stop uh, ordering. If we had black and white right here, then I don't think I would have been financially ready. <laughs> you can't order black and white and cheer and cheers every night and get it delivered. <laughs> there you go. Dang. Yeah. No, you're right though, man. Like for real, dude, like that stuff add up real quick, man. If you do like a, even just do a budget, man. I mean, we're not always, too, you know, don't be too prideful to do sit down and actually see where your money goes. I feel like for me, when I when I want if I was scared to do that, it would probably because because I know I'm blowing all my money. You yeah. know, like you know, yeah. you don't want to just accept reality of like, oh damn, man, my money's seeping out of my pockets, and that's yeah. what I did big time in the military. I, I'm not gonna I'm not ashamed of it because that learned I learned how to learn more about money when I was in the military, just going through all the t trials and tribulations of, oh, we're gonna go to Iraq, let me max this credit card out and just pay the interest the whole time yeah. as a private, yeah, like, it off or like, dude, dude it just there's so many horrible people. <laughs> People just get into horrible financial decisions in the military. I mean, even as early as AIT, what do they do? They go buy cars on a pass yeah. in Virginia, Virginia Beach and bring them back to the post, not registered or nothing. Like, dude, like 12, 15, 18% interest or something like that. Like, they'll get you, man. Like, I don't know, dude. You, you, the the you, funny thing is that they always tell you not to do that. You always hear that. I, There's people before you like, oh, they did that. But you know what? You're like, no, nah, that's not going to happen to me. I, uh, I'm good. I'm good with my money. <laughs> I didn't do the car thing, thankfully, but I, um, the credit card thing I did, you know, you know, experience that and just buying stuff when you're gone and like, dude, you get on that deployment, you know how it goes, man. You get yeah, on deployment you, and you're not spending your money. It feels good after you start to stack your money, but then you start, if you're on social media, you start spending, you start looking at other people or like, you just want to spend to spend, man. It's like, especially damn. you came from a place like you didn't have money growing up. Like I really didn't I have too. money growing up. So I'm just like, you know what? I could buy myself these Jordans. I could buy myself this. And I think back, yeah. like how much money would I have saved if I would have bought all this when I was gone? <laughs> For real, dude. At least some of the Jordans you might be able to resell or something like that. But yeah, as far as most <laughs> of that stuff, like. Trust, yeah, dude, I feel you on that. Now I'm trying to be like a, a minimalist and just have nice, a couple of nice things, but don't have a lot, you know, because yeah, <laughs> don't need much. But yeah, that's true. Hey, what um, what you miss? What do you miss most about the military? Honestly, is the impact I had on, on soldiers and stuff. Like the impact I had, like 
you know, it's always different because, you know, growing up as a, when you grow up as a private, I mean, I came up pretty quick. So I, I was only like a specialist for like six months. So I was I came up pretty quick in the military, but I had the opportunity to see some great leaders and some horrible leaders. So it was just just having that having that mentality of who I wanted to be as a leader and how I was going to shape myself. And then you just see the feedback because, I mean, the other day on Facebook, I posted that I got accepted to uh, to San Francisco State for a master's in counseling with a concentration in career in college. And I had old soldiers just telling me that that's a perfect fit for you. Like old soldiers that, that were privates that were under me telling me that that's a good fit for you. That made me feel great, like knowing that yeah. they think that that's a good career for me to go into, that they think that that's, that's a great thing. Like just little stuff like that makes you feel like, oh, man, I did make a difference in some of these people's lives. I did make a difference in some of these soldiers. So I miss I miss that aspect of, of making a difference in somebody's life for the better. Yeah, but you, it seems like you're on your way to do it now with what you're going to school for. So you're going to get it right back on the civilian side. Yeah. So, so don't, I mean, anybody watching this, don't, don't feel bad for asking questions. Like I asked my counselor at the Voc Rehab, like, what do I need to do your job? Like, what, what, what degree do I need to do your job so I can help soldiers out? And she ended up just lining it up for me. Like, this is what you need. I was like, all right, well then that's what I'm going to do. That's what I want to do. For real, dude, that's a, dude, that's an amazing job, bro. To be a, Vogue rehab counselor and just help soldiers like get over their exactly. get over their trends get over their trash and get and like get on to something that they can do like because man we and, and the counselor it makes because you're like the gatekeeper man and I we had a I, I can't lie I had a counselor we don't have to say his name and he's retired now anyways but man he had a horrible reputation and he's like he dude you're veterans are relying on you to help them exactly like I don't want to throw trash on nobody but you know. Right, we need people in there. The way I look at it, we need people in there that know knows what's going on with the. We need veterans, veterans in there, man. We need yeah, vets just, in there, dude. Yeah, just even if they're not vets, at least understanding. Like, I don't want to say a name either, but when I was doing my whole PTSD screening, you know how they ask you all these questions. The doctor that was asking me didn't even know what I was talking about. Like, I would I would tell him deployment. I would tell him like patrol. He'd be like, "What does that mean?" Like, and I don't think he was trying to like run a game on me, but he really didn't understand what I was no. telling him. I'm just like, "How are you the person that's gonna tell me?" if i have this or not and you don't know what i'm talking about and that's kind of what snapped me in my head i'm like you know what i want to help out veterans i want to i want to at least do what i can do and and continue to make a difference and feel feel like i'm finishing my career not that it got cut short if you know what i'm saying no nah, absolutely do good for you keep on going because I, I feel like i want to be in the same community like you said i used to always want to be a a veteran service officer and stuff like that so yeah. I, when i was going to school using my voc rehab i did the work study program and you get paid like minimum wage and you like go in the office and try to help them and stuff like that. So I try to do that, but you know, I've applied and everything a couple of times. I got a bachelor's degree. So I have, you know, all the prerequisites, but never, it's never panned out, but that's why I sort of started just trying to dive in on this yeah, and, um, and just, platform. just make it happen, man. With, because there's so many people that are willing to share. There's so many people that have gone through crazy things that have overcome it. Dude, everyone, you know, we're in the military. All they talk about is what they talk about. Uh, what's it called, dude? When uh, resiliency, like you said, your uh, ability to bounce back. We've been, man, we've been talking about that since private days, dude. You know what I'm saying? 2006, 2007. You know, yeah. so if we could do it in the military and all all that stuff, you you have so much at stake. You, you're a young soldier, like you said. You can go through the ranks fast. You can get, you can be in charge of a mission that's bigger than, you know, way bigger than you itself. You're in charge of all these teams and all yeah. this movement and all that. And sometimes you get out, man, and it just blows up in your face. But it seems like you had a, a good plan and you had a good time. So I'm glad that you had a – it seems like a little bit less of a, a hectic transition, although it wasn't like how you planned it. So I'm sure that yeah. threw you for a loop. But that you did, didn't – you know, go that ahead. It did definitely throw me, throw me for a loop. Not that, That's kind of like – and I don't want to like just make it seem like it was like perfect, like everything's perfect. It's just – you just gotta d dive down and figure it out because it's 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 rough. It's hard out here sometimes, especially for for veterans like young veterans that get out after three years or, or you know get out with other than honorable conditions, you know. And then it's just hard them not knowing what they can get because I mean they're still a veteran. They still they still need that help. They need to they need to go out there and figure out what they want to do because it's just it's it's just so sad seeing somebody that served and then them not having a job or them being in the street or something like that. It's just like why why is that you know what how, how does that even how does how is that even a thing, you know? Seriously, then you go to when we were in Afghanistan the last time. Remember, we went to we went to Fob Frontneck after we got done at uh, in the middle. Remember at Pacemaker and Janat. <laughs> then we were chilling at Frontneck, dude. Like they gave all that stuff away, man. 
Yeah. All those chews, all those Humvees, all that stuff stayed, man. Those billions, trillions of dollars. I, I would, you know what I'm saying? If you had to yeah. add, and we we don't have nothing here. No, like, I mean, That's they crazy. got they got stuff. I guess right. They got stuff. Not not nothing to. We got 22 yeah. people a day that commit suicide. We know people from from. from uh, we know people from Germany that 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 took their own life, man. Rest in peace yeah. to Rex Reynolds. All them people that we know, man, uh, Palmer, you know what I'm saying? These people that were in our squadron, dude, we're not making nothing up. Yeah. And, like, that's 8,000 people a year, man. Yeah, and it's, it, it's so, crazy. But but this is why we need, we need to, like, people, like, you know, veterans to go out there and speak up, man. Like, don't – like, I, I honestly, definitely. to be real with you, I saw you put this podcast up, and I'm like, should I, should I, should I go on it? Like, I've never been on something like this. And it just, it just took me saying, you know what, like, maybe somebody's going to hear something – out of what I'm saying, and it's gonna help them out. It was just, it's just taking that leap, and I just, I was actually at the gym, and I sent you a message. I was like, you know what, like, hey, let's do this. I, I like what you're doing. Let's figure this out, and I'm down to go on there. That's what it's about, man. Because, like you said, it's like we have that brotherhood or sisterhood. If we got brothers and sisters we both serve with, but no, we all got along, man. For the most part, when we were in the military, everyone come from different places, different walks of life, but we all had each other's backs for the greater good. And we get out and man, people just get, you know, get thrown every which direction. And man, some people get thrown in the ringer, dude, and they can't get yeah. themselves rung out. They don't have that second platoon, first platoon, first squad there to we'll go walk down the barracks and go knock on someone's door real quick. But yeah. you can get on the phone. We can get on the I mean, dude, we still are can be connected, but you know, it, it we yeah, we gotta do better, it's man. Easy, I guess it's easier now. We were talking about this earlier. It's easier now, like you know. Everybody, yeah. everybody has social media now. Everybody has an email yeah. address, man. Even LinkedIn, like even even if, yeah. if anybody wants to reach out to me on LinkedIn, I mean, I'll help them out with whatever I can. You know, that's kind of I'm already gonna start my internship uh, on in July, so I'm actually gonna be intern entering there at uh, at San Francisco State, and I'll be I'll be working in the graduate department, so I'll be I'll be getting some experience that I never had before, and that's what I told me in my interview. I was like, I'm just trying to get somewhere where I get experience in the civilian world, and I can mesh it up with my experience in the military and that's that's what i'm trying to do now nah, you're doing it man you on the you on the way man you you happy for yourself oh yeah i'm, I'm happy that i'm happy that i'm able to to do something where man if you would have asked me and i had a, in seventh grade i had like a 0 0.8 gpa man i if you would ask yeah. me back then if i would ever go to school and do some college i'd be like no 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 but here i am i graduated with my undergrad with a 3.85 and i'm just like oh this is crazy <laughs> Hey man, but good for you. And guess what? You can look at, you can have a total different perspective on it because sometimes I tell people, look at it like you're getting paid to go to school, man. Exactly. Cause you, cause you are yeah. dude. You literally are. Yeah, why exactly. not? Why not use that to your advantage? And somewhere like San Francisco, the BAH is probably like 3,900 or like yeah, something like 3, that. Man. 600. So if you're, if you're in California and you're driving distance from San Francisco and you're afraid of traffic, don't be scared. Like do whatever you can to even go community college in San Francisco a vocational school in San Francisco, do something where where you get that full that full BH. Secure the bag alert. Exactly. Nah, like, yeah, exactly. Nah, like for real, this man. Where nah. drop, this is where you would drop the, the boom boom. <laughs> I was say I, I gotta get like the, the horn, you know what I'm saying? And I gotta get like the DJ Khaled ad libs, yeah, man. Go. Right. Tip of the day. Don't ever play yourself. So. <laughs> yeah, hey nah, man. For but dude, my buddy, dude. That's great because my buddy just got a hundred percent. It took him five years to go, but guess what? We linked up to go down to Key West uh, last Memorial Day, and we had him call and do an intent to file right in the car. In the car, he did it. Then he did his claim. He did it all by himself, bro. He got a hundred percent the first time go, dude. Exactly. And he got back pay. And he uh, he just it just opens all the doors up, dude. Like you got the whole you got like the whole. It's the mother load, dude. Once you like, just open up the stuff that's there for you, man. Because once you have a little bit of financial security, I'm not telling you you're gonna get rich just off having 100. percent But once you have something where you could have financial security, it's, it's especially if you have a family, you have kids. It's easier for you to try to invest on yourself and start working because you don't have to worry about what you're gonna pay for mortgage. How are you gonna yeah. do that? Because you have some money coming in. But just just think of it as as as, as a long run investment in yourself because. I mean, people invest in crypto, people invest in stocks, but I mean, it's time for us to really invest in ourselves because at the end of the day, like that's all we have. Dude, that's a, hey, that's a great point because you're right. You, like whatever we know or like our network or knowledge, that's what we're going to have that come up. But like you, you got to never stop investing in yourself with the VA, with learning, with 
you know, your job field or like even when we were in the military, dude, you stop investing in yourself. All we do is train, 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 exactly. train. Exactly. Not, and, not, and not every investment is monetary, you know, like you right. can invest in your mental health. You can invest in your physical health. You can invest in just, just you know, doing doing stuff that, that's out of your bubble. Like me, even me now, like I'm more social now. Even my wife's like, oh, you turn into a social butterfly. Like I just say hi to people. I just talk to people because it's just like I have like a weight lifted off my shoulders because I know what I'm doing and I know where I'm going and I could see the end goal. And that's kind of like that's kind of the way I'm looking at it right now. Instead of just being that grumpy, salty veteran, I'm kind of just trying to give it a different name to where they see me as a happy veteran. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But you're also doing, you have the, you have the reins of your own life in your hands, dude, you're doing, you're doing life on your terms, which is something not veteran or not. That'd be, that's probably something that people probably strive to do their whole exactly. life, dude. People hate what they do for a living. Most people say they, they hate what they do for a living. Never mind, you know, do what they want. So more props to you for doing that because I'm sort of, I'm sort of like you, I'm trying to kind of live in the moment and be thankful that I'm, hey, I'm, I'm getting my master's degree paid for. Exactly. I'm 100. percent I could be with my son. I could coach his teams. I could be active. I could. Now I just got to worry about. Okay, let me get my health back in order. Let me start eating good. Because you said if you're not, if you're not there mentally, if you're not there physically, that's gonna drag you down. It's like it's a total, it's a total like the full spectrum of things. But yeah. now, nah, man, it, it feels good when you actually sit back and think of it. Because like, damn, man, we used to be in Afghanistan. And pacemaker sitting with the tents coming down with no air conditions when they took us for the last three days sitting there yeah. looking going to hit a uh, going to try to get heated blankets from the medics tent but they didn't have no more like yo yeah. get the helicopter get me out of here dude but yeah. nah dude that's good man I'm glad you've been killing the game man because guess what it takes people like you and everyone else out there trying to help because you got to go through it and then you just got to pass it on like you're still an NCO dude that's all we got to look at it we're still NCOs at the end of the day yeah. we just don't have to we'll put the uniform on and get called in still a leader you know what i'm saying he's still going to be in charge of people and tell people what they should or let them people know what to do essentially exactly. like just just show them what's out there that's it doing stuff like this you know maybe if people just you know look at this podcast and be like oh they were rambling about stuff at least they'll remember voc rehab at least they'll remember something you know it's just it's just something that they could remember that they didn't know they had before and if it's just one person that, that you know that likes it, one person that helps out, then then I feel good about it because because that's something that we need to start doing. Exactly, it's domino effect because we all know hundreds of veterans that we serve exactly. with. So it's like if you get on here and share your story, all it takes you might have saw Santi or you might have saw what whoever you're like. Damn, now people from Germany on there. All right, let me get on there. Now we're gonna have Sar Winterson coming back on here soon too. So it's like okay, exactly. Like get on here. It's not about me. Tell, tell people what you're – because guess what? No one ever asked me how it was when I got out the Army. I was just trying to figure stuff out and calling out for damn dire need or something like that, SOS signal when I'm really – when I shit really hits the fan. But who's there to do the – like I said, who's there to give the the rock drill on getting out the military? Like yeah, the a, yeah. a, a, a cap is that rock drill? Is it a, But I don't know, man. I had ideas. We could get a team together and go around by veteran by military bases and just speak at hotels because they're not going to let you on the base and talk about Mm -hmm. all the stuff they don't the loopholes of the the getting out of the military. But or like you said, get on this. Listen to what we're saying. We're not trying to ramble. We're literally trying to tell people from our heart what what possibly you could do instead of doing nothing or feeling sorry for yourself or what's out there on the other side when you do get out if you don't have a plan or stuff like that, man. But exactly uh, and, and every every experience is different every experience exactly. is different. even like even if you sit back and you look at your military career your experience in the military was different than my experience and my experience is different than other people like yeah some people probably had a, a, a bad experience but you know what once you're out now it's up to you to figure out how you're going to make your civilian world like that's that's you to figure out how you're going to how you're going to be out here and do the research look at these videos you know seek help when you need help no matter what that help is don't ever be too prideful for that because there's no there's no point there's no point in being prideful that, that's that's not going to get you anywhere do you think you found yourself being too prideful i mean i know i did before i got out the military it took me a while to get over all that stuff man what about you a hundred percent especially being you know hispanic and coming from from a from a kind of like a culture where like mental health and stuff like that was, was never really talked about so i'm just like you know what like i don't need no help i don't need none of this and then just finally just just even reading like you know self self worth quotes and stuff like that I just i didn't realize that was helping my mental health out or just like looking at at memes or just stuff like that just little stuff like every it, traditional traditional help might not work for everybody but there's stuff that you could look out there and see just to make you feel better like even even being grateful for like something that you have something small or something big it's just 
stuff just because you need mental health help doesn't mean you need to go see a doctor or nothing it just means you you probably have a bad day or you probably need something like that so it all varies i guess yeah you're right man you just got to take the stigma off of it and just like get get the help the, i mean the help's there if needed people exactly. just don't use, utilize exactly. it people are there doing that job whether they're military or civilian but people are there doing that filling those slots so use use the support man don't be shameful i mean you know it's there should be it feels good to go talk to somebody that really doesn't know you and you just yeah. sort of talk about stuff and like they have no, it doesn't really matter what they think either because at the end of the day you're trying to it doesn't if you're trying to help yourself you shouldn't even care what anyone thinks about you you shouldn't sometimes, care about it sometimes it just helps like letting the words out and hearing them out loud like saying it and you're just like whoa like maybe i was overreacting or maybe maybe it's not as bad as i thought now that i'm saying it out loud you know right it, just, it all depends now nah, you're right though man but no, nah, that's good, dude. I'm glad we touched on mental health. It's a huge one, man. I'm glad we exactly. like went, dug deep on that. Um, in regards to any tools, minus the Voc Rehab that you've been using or that you've used, what what else have you used from the VA's uh, arsenal? So from the VA's arsenal, I honestly, like I said, I just went on the website and clicked on everything and just read everything, whatever I think I could apply for. Like I even applied for like, uh, I didn't, I wouldn't really know what it was, but when I wasn't working, I applied for that uh, monthly stipend for like hundred percent disabled vets. They're like, no, you have to be like, like fully, you can't move and stuff like that. I was like, all right, cool. So see, that's one of the things that you apply for it. They're going to say, no, they yeah. said, no, I didn't really understand what it was. But once they called me and said like, oh, are you like, do you need help changing in the morning? I was like, oh, I'm not there yet. They're like, okay, then I don't think you'd be able to get it. And I was like, all right, thank They didn't yell at me and tell me, oh, that's bad that you're trying to apply for this. I just didn't know. So just looking at stuff, looking at that VA website, you know, and and now I'm going to hold myself accountable because, like I said earlier, like I wish I would have joined more veteran groups and does stuff like that. I still haven't really joined anything. So now that I actually said it out loud, I'm going to hold myself accountable and probably join something where there's more veterans around where we could talk about stuff and I could actually get get perspective from veterans past and present, you know? Yeah, we, hey, we should do, I, I was thinking to do like a Zoom call or like something like that, but do a live call so people can join and do like call it sergeant's time training. Everyone exactly. get on, like ask, <laughs> ask their question for an hour or something like that, yeah. like kind of live call. But yeah, dude, like all that stuff's good because there's a lot of Facebook groups for veterans. Some of them are like infiltrated with people that are probably fakes, but a yeah. lot of them actually have a lot of good information. And like you said too, LinkedIn, man, has been a link. LinkedIn's killer, man. It was great mm -hmm. for when I was looking for jobs. There's always people going to answer you. They're looking to help you. And the worst thing they can do is not answer you. That's or tell you no. That's what are they going to do? Or cut? Or are they going to come cuss you out? Yeah, that's that exactly. is that going to bother you if someone sends you? That means they got something going on with them. It's not you, man. You're just you know exactly. looking for help. But exactly, especially if you're a veteran and you got out and you haven't have made a LinkedIn, you get that free year of LinkedIn Pro every year. It's every year. You can renew it every year. Every year you got okay. See, I learned something today because mine just expired. There you go. Yeah, yeah. You can. You can let, me, let me look for exact for the link because someone put me on in that game. But yeah, you can renew it every year. It's nonstop. So okay, yeah. There you go. Let's see. So we learned something new. Now I'm gonna have to go uh, renew it so I can see who's who's creeping to my profile. <laughs> yeah, dude, got to man. Link up with people on there. But it's that. Hey, what about the? You told me to use the VA loan, right? For your ha for oh, house. Yeah, but I I use the VA loan uh, when I when we were first. We were first going to Washington. So I ended up getting a VA loan when I first went to Washington. I was still in the military, bought my first house, and I ended up selling in Washington and buying in California as a veteran, as a 100% veteran. So I ended up getting the, the whole property, state tax, the state tax. I ended up getting that reduced. Of course, they, they don't do 100% uh, of no taxes here, but they reduce it based on your income. So you okay. do get quite a bit of chunk and I ended up pay, paying no, uh, I think it was uh, what the lender fee or whatever. It yeah, does. no, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no, like sell whatever fee that is. They, yeah, they so whatever put it on, yeah. Was, but actually, if, if you're a veteran in California, I also I also learned this yesterday, so it's pretty cool. So you could do the CalVet home loan. So it's it's a little bit better than the VA home loan because the CalVet home loan is not owned by a mortgage company or a bank. It's owned by California. So like let's say for some reason you were having hard times and you couldn't pay something, then they'll work with you instead of just trying to take from you. They'll work with you, and it's through the state of California. And you could you can also have a VA home loan and a CalVet loan at the same time. So that's something that I was looking into if I want to get a second property. I don't know exactly if you have to live on both properties, kind of how it is with the VA loan. I yeah. got, with the home loan, I haven't got that far yet. But just laying it out there to any veterans in California, look at the CalVet home loan. That's that's something that the VSO let me know about yesterday when I was there. 
I just learned something new today too, man. You never, that's what I'm saying. That's what it's all about, dude. There's so much exactly. information that it's just not underneath one umbrella, dude. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but that's great. That's what people need to hear, man. There's, I'm sure there's millions, damn near thousands, hundreds of thousands of veterans in California itself. So what exactly. did you have to, what'd you have to do to get that, uh, like get your property taxes? Was it pretty, pretty easy? Did you hit up like the County or state or whatever? Yeah. So, so it was pretty easy here. Cause I live in, in Woodland, California, the right next to Sacramento. It's pretty veteran friendly. So sure. like the assessors, the assessor was, she helped me out. She was great. Cause I kind of, like I kind of didn't know what I was doing, so I just sent her all this paperwork. She's like, "No, I'm gonna highlight where you got it. What do you got to do?" Because she wasn't in the office, so she just sent me all the paperwork and highlighted what I needed to do. So it was great to have somebody like that to help me out. But it was in Yolo County, so yeah, it's it's, it's through your county, and every county is different. So the best thing to do if you have a VA loan and you're and you're trying to do that is just talk to your uh, your realtor. They're usually pretty well versed in pointing you in the right direction, and they know what they're doing. And then just call your assessor, your county assessor, and ask them questions. That's what they're here for. They're here to answer these questions. Email them. Email is the best because, you know, on the phone, sometimes you forget what they tell you. So maybe yeah. email them just be like, hey, I, I have a couple questions about what I want to do. It just goes back to that whole being proactive thing. Just try to do what's better because you're investing in yourself there because you're investing in your home. You're investing in, in trying to get more money in your pocket because at the end of the day, that, that's what it's all about. Yeah, and to touch on that one, like uh, I think this is pretty. This would be a pretty good piece. Like if you're working with a realtor, or a real estate agent, or or uh, you know mortgage lender, make sure that they actually know what they're talking about in regards to the VA stuff. Because when I first went to look for a house, I had, you know, they're telling me to go look at houses, then they're telling me they that I wasn't going to get qualified or whatever. Now, part of it should have been it should be my own fault because I should get the the letter, you know, the certificate of eligibility yeah. or whatever from the VA to make sure I'm good for this. But like you know, it's also the the, the mortgage team's uh, uh, job to make sure you can get a pre approval and stuff like that too. So sometimes people don't know what they're talking about. And I just talked to one of my other buddies, and he was telling me like, you know, if you use a VA loan, sometimes there's there's incentives and there's, there's programs out there that actually give you money back at closing. And that's something that I didn't really know too much oh. about, and I'm not going to speak on. But like I know there's stuff out there. So just be cognizant, I guess I would say, of that because it's just – it's always something, man. Like you, yeah. So just just be proactive. Just a simple Google search, you know, a exactly. uh, military benefits, veteran benefits for the state of California. Then look for like a .gov website and then you know that's pretty much legit and then, you know, make sure it's the right one. And you go through like Florida, they have a whole list. They got this, they got yeah. that, they got this, they got that. And just see what you got, you know? I think on the VA, I think that's where I went. I think it was on the VA website. It tells okay. you state by state. You could go on there and click it. And also when, when you uh, when you get out, you know how you have that like 180 days of where the VA calls you and tells you how you're doing? They send you, like, they'll send you emails. Maybe look through your junk emails if you got out like recently or a while ago or through your deleted emails. But they send you emails state specific of what to click on to see what you have and that's kind of now that i am refreshing my memory that's something that i use because they just send me emails with a bunch of, of stuff like oh there's dental there's this and i just clicked and, and read it because i mean i didn't know what i was doing so i'm like let me try to figure this out and see see, see what's available for me yeah hey, good good point um what would you tell someone that was getting out the military or you know that what would be your message back to the troops now or to like a old to like you back in the day you got anything that you'd want to touch on minus what you said it's yeah it's it's not that scary it's not that scary of course when you're in the military you think it's going to be scary going to the civilian world and figuring out especially how am i going to transfer my infantry skills into into a civilian world am i going to be a cop am i going to be a security guard am i going to do something like that it's not that scary you know just have a plan and, and just get a uh, buckle up for the ride because it is a ride. At the end of the day, it is a ride. It, it is going to go up and down, and you're going to figure out what to do. But have that goal. Have that goal, and don't forget that goal. Even if you have to write it down on a whiteboard, have a goal of what you want to do and where you want to see yourself. Let's say you did 10 years in the Army. Where do you want to see yourself 10 years once you're out of the Army? So try to equivalent the time that you were in to the time of where you want to see when you're out. And, and along those lines. So that's something that I would tell myself. Okay. Yeah. Goal is definitely important, man. Like you said, write it down. That way you put it in your subconscious mind too and get those, get that stuff to come to life, man. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big believer of that whole manifesting. So I'm okay. Let me, let me figure this out. Let me put it out there. Let me, let me try to throw it into the universe and see if, see if it catches. 
There you go, man. You got to put them positive affirmations out there to speak life over yourself and the people, man, rather than, you know, sitting around and just gossiping or sitting, talking trash. It doesn't really do it. Have I done it? Of course, man. I'm, I'm guilty of all that stuff too, but I'm trying not to be part of that because like you're not really bringing yourself up or anyone around you when you sit on that. We could all dwell on negative stuff, man, but exactly. it's like you got to kind of do. We've also seen people sitting on the side of the road in Afghanistan or Africa or wherever you might have deployed to with, with nothing, man. So you got to be grateful for what you have and just like keep going, man. No, no, because guess what? At the end of the day, nobody cares, man. Nobody cares if you're doing bad. Most people, they really don't. So yeah, you got to just pull yourself up, man. Yeah, but then the day you got to invest in yourself, kind of like we were saying, it's just it's some, something we have to do. And that's why I think that's why it worked for me to go to like a group of veterans and stuff like that and talk about because then maybe I could talk about the bad stuff that I had or the bad stuff that I seen and, and have somebody who actually understands what I'm, what, what I went through or, shit, or just stuff like that. You know, it's just, it's just something that I probably don't really talk about that much because I don't really have that much people to just be like, Oh, you know what? This was bad. I'm just like, you know what? We're going to go forward and we're going to figure it out from there. No, you're right. Hey, you're right. Well, they have one every third th uh, Wednesday of the month here in uh, Florida. And uh, it's pretty good because they got all veterans from all combat veterans or even first responders that have seen like traumatic, crazy stuff that they probably can't tell or they don't want to talk to just some rando. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That has no idea what they're going to talk about. But, dude, I actually met a, a pilot, man, from the Army. He was in Black Hawk Down, bro. I was like, damn, dude. He was telling me – I didn't even ask him. He just started telling, you know, tell me a little bit after we were talking about what he did on the side. He's doing bee farming. He does bee. He does bee. He he does honeybees. That's and probably that's kind of, soothing, yeah. man. That probably, that probably calms him down. Yeah, ex exactly. That, it's, yeah. It's, it's therapeutic. Exactly, dude. So I was asking him all about that. And then then we started talking about the military. And, the, and he was telling me about, like, Black, like the Black Hawk Down stuff. I was like, wow, dude, that's wild, man. He was actually there for that, dude. It's like some... You never know what someone really went through until you know they opened up and talked to you, and, and you should take that as a as a privilege, as a as a compliment that he was able to open up to you like that. Because some people don't open up, or some people just don't really trust people to open up. So that's that's always you, be approachable. That's something that that I that I that I'm working on. Like I said, being social now, I'm trying to be approachable. So no matter what somebody has to say, I'm here to hear them out and never judge because everyone's life's different. Nah, dude, you're right. I'm trying to do the same thing. What about the time? Let's, uh, what about the time? You remember when we got called back when we after we got back from deployment when they set the sprinkler system off? Uh, I, <laughs> I was lucky enough to be in a WLC at the time. Oh man, so you guys, it was funny because all you guys got like locked in. You guys got locked dude, in. You guys weren't able to do nothing. What we were out, we were at Oktoberfest in Munich, bro. They called back. They called like exactly. you got to get back here today by seventeen thirty or yeah. UCMJ. No questions asked. I said we're exactly. in exactly. Like, we're like, in Munich in WLC. So I, my those rules didn't apply to me. Damn, you missed out, bro. That shit was crazy, man. Yeah, hey, I was there for the. I don't know. If, I don't think you were in Tutu, but we had a squadron uh, run drug test where they had all of us, like they, they every single everybody, like from all Tutu, <laughs> had to go to the motor pool and do a drug test, and we couldn't leave the motor pool. Until oh yeah, no, no, no. I, I did that. I did that. Yeah, yeah. That, they made they made like the they made like the the support in the Tutu. That was after the deployment. Yeah, and they were looking sitting there like crazy and shit. The only thing I was happy about is because the next day was like a squadron run or whatever, but they canceled it because we were there till eleven o'clock at night. So I was like, oh, okay, that's something good. I'm yeah. Not worried about that. <laughs> Man, that was wild, dude. But now, nah, what was your what was your favorite duty station out of all, out of out of everything? It had to be Germany, man. It, it, especially because I went there twice. So, I, like like I was speaking to you offline, I went there as a private, and of course, I just wanted to have fun, you know, do all everything. Didn't really travel much, and then the second time, I went in there as a as a sergeant, staff sergeant. I was able to to travel and do more more adult grown up stuff and go to different countries and see man and hey if you would have went there as a staff sergeant but you never would have went there as a private you would have probably been doing the same shit you did the first time hey, exactly, you, know, I'm exactly. you got dude germany man hey europe is awesome i mean the night like, obviously be responsible you know we're not telling you to get out there and get reckless but man go enjoy yourself hey don't line up at the defect on the weekends man with your meal card out ready to go play video games like Go to go get a pat go get a pat get a passport stamp. Go to Munich. Go to Frankfurt. Yeah. Go out and do something, man. Travel, but so no, nah, dude. There's so much culture just within a 45 minute flight, or just Seriously. even even driving somewhere. There's so much stuff that 
if you would have asked, like I said, that same kid in seventh grade, and you were told him that he would have been to Europe, he would have been like, you're crazy. What are you talking about? I'm just the- here not knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> hey, what was your favorite food in Germany? So my favorite food, probably schnitzel. Uh, schnitzel, so that, that, that Jaeger schnitzel, that was probably good. And then there was a lot, there was a lot of other different places, like steak on a stone. I don't know if you've ever been there. But oh, yeah, they yeah. Had exotic meat and they put it on the little, yeah, little yeah. Platters. That place was good, yeah. What about, because you got to, you got to go back, man, because I haven't been, I left Germany like 2014. So you got to see it come up a little bit. Like yeah, you've so, seen a revolution of Germany almost. like Exactly, exactly. I got, I got to see it to two different stages. I got to see it to, I was there when it was still a company. So it was dog companies when I got there okay. and then it switched over to squadron and I, we were, we were, and it switched over to squadron and, and, you know, in troops. So we were Eagle troops. So I, I got to see a transition and, and it's funny because honestly we went there and, and I got to see the pictures of when I was a private and all that stuff from when we took those pictures and the, the whole troop photos and all that. Yeah, like, oh, man, that's that was, cool. You know, showing my soldiers that cause I went right back to two, two. So that was pretty cool. Damn, they put you right back in. You remember the uh, restaurant called Alexander's, the Greek restaurant? Yeah, that was, still there. That's place still there. That was, price was pretty fire. And then uh, Angelo what? Soul Food still there. That man, still Soul there. Food, hey, yeah, man, those staples, man. And then they had all the donor kebabs. So man, good yeah, time. Donors, okay. yeah, that's something. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. something that I miss. Get out there and get you a donor, man. Get on there the train. Go. But there you go. Hey, what? Uh, describe the mil- your military service in one word. Describe. What'd you say? I would say unpredictable. There you go. That's a pretty good one. All yeah, right. Unpredictable because, you know, like I said, eight months in, I went to Afghanistan as a private and then came back, was going Fort Hood, 3CR, thinking they're coming back from deployment. Nine weeks later, it was back in Afghanistan. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> man. Fort Hood. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of – I would say unpredictable because – as much as I felt like I was in the driver's seat, I always felt like it was one of those those student cars where someone else could, could turn the wheel at any time they wanted to. You you in a clown car, man? Like yeah. there you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, that's what about uh, favorite? What was your favorite DFAX and favorite MRE? So DFAX, I was lucky enough, you know, to be married when I got there, so I didn't really go to the DFAX that much. Oh, that's but good. The DFAX in in Manus, in Manus, when we were coming back from Afghanistan. Oh damn, like, they had all the candy bars, man. Dude, yeah, that DFAX, that DFAX was good. They even had <laughs> they had like a, a whole whole art gallery out there, man. Yeah, like, that dude. Was crazy, yeah. And then MRE, you gotta go with that Chili Mac. That damn, chili Mac. bro, that's like three votes Chili Mac, bro. Hey, but you know what? They have these new MREs now, man. They I heard chicken, chicken rice burrito bowl tastes like Chipotle, you know. So they got they got all these all these new MREs that they're trying to make a little healthier. But you can't go wrong with that Chili Mac. Damn, bro, Chili Mac is fan favorite on that, man. Yeah, I knew I wasn't wild. gonna be able to go to the bathroom for like three days, but you know, still, still you're good. Still yeah, man. Eating it. <laughs> hey, man. All right, well, hey, you got anything you want to close it out on, or what's up? No, so just, just, hey, I appreciate you doing this, man. This is great. This is a great thing. Of course, I'm gonna share this, and hopefully, somebody sees it. Hopefully, somebody says like, oh, that that helped me out. Somebody was out there. You know, and don't be afraid to reach out, whether your experience was a good or a bad one. I mean, this is this is great. Hey, absolutely, man. I appreciate you sharing your story, and I'm sure this is going to touch somebody. That's all of what it's about. Last thing I guess I would ask you is who you got to call out to come on here and share their story. You think anyone would be a taker on your on the challenge? So off the top of my head, I, I, really, I really don't know. I don't want to call anybody out and then be like, oh, no, but you know what? Oh, well, let them do it. With all yeah, they can, all they can do is say no. We've been saying Let's that the whole time, know. man. All they can do is say no, bro. I don't even Let's know. Let's go. Let's go. Who do I got, man? Probably I'll, I'll probably call out Daniel Uzma. This was my medic. You know, he's, he's doing pretty well. He started working for the VA in Puerto Rico now, so I'll probably call him out. Oh, man, where you at, Daniel? Yeah, hey, he's go, a Florida man. guy too. He's a Florida guy. There you go. Ah, uh, man, we're gonna connect. I don't know how he friends with you. You from California, bro? <laughs> that's like no. That's probably why you got scared. You didn't want to call him out, man. You know how it go. Uh, it's all good, dude. But nah, man. Hey, it's been a pleasure. It's been nice catching up with you. And let's keep let's keep in touch. And uh, hey, good luck with your school. And hey, just remember when you. I'm sure I'm gonna talk to you before that. But when you finish your master's degree program, you use voc rehab. You're going to get turned into another counselor and uh, they're going to work with you for job placement. But as long as you can get you can get your B.A.H. for two additional months after you graduate school, as long as you look for a job. So you can essentially. Yeah, you can essentially look for a job and apply for like five jobs a week and you send them a job log and you get B.A.H. for another two months, bro. 
Yeah, yeah, that's something. So, hey, that's another hey, boys. grand here, here in California, so you can stay in Florida if you want. <laughs> hey, man, I got a kid. I can't leave, man. Now you're going to try to talk shit at the end like that. Okay, man. Hey, send me, hey, man, send me half the BH, bro. <laughs> right, nah, man. But, hey, good for you, man. Hey, nice talking to you. Everybody, thanks for listening in this time. And uh, if you guys want to come on here and share your story, hey, don't don't be afraid to reach out. Have a All good right. one. All, All right. right. Take care.